Over the last year, DWM has become my go-to tiling window manager. It's the one that I have seem to have settled on and used the most over the last year. Before that, it was i3, then I moved to DWM. And despite trying a whole bunch of other window managers, and I mean a whole bunch, DWM is the one that I keep coming back to. Over the last few months, I've had a few people ask me for tips on how to set up a suckless setup. And today, that's what I'm going to show you is how to go about doing that. Now, a few things you should know. First of all, this video is not universal. Second of all, my camera sucks. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, th this, this video is not universal. I'm going to be installing this in Arco Linux, which is based on Arch Linux, and it should work fairly well for anybody who's using Arch or a derivative of Arch. But if you're using Ubuntu or Debian or another operating system, this is not going to work for you, mainly because there are dependencies on those distributions that you'll need to install before you can actually go through and build uh, DWM or Sucklet or ST or D D Menu. So uh, I have made a video in the past about how to do this on Ubuntu. I'll link that in the video description below and put the card up top if I remember how, remember to do that. Uh, that video should still work just fine, but again, if you follow the one that's in this video, the tutorial that's in this video, just know that it probably won't work unless you're on Arch or an Arch derivative. So let's go ahead and jump in, shall we? Now I'm going to be doing this in a virtual machine and we're going to be doing this from XFCE. So it really doesn't matter what desktop environment you're in when you do this. You could be on a TTY if you've just installed Arch Linux. It doesn't really matter. I just happen to have XFCE here installed. So that's what I'm going to be using. So the first thing you need to do is obviously install the program. So we're going to need a terminal and I'll zoom in here. This is Alacrity and we'll make this full screen so you can actually see. So the first mistake people make is when they download DWM, they sometimes either download it in their home directory or they download it in their downloads folder. And both of those are a mistake. And the reason why is because you delete things from those folders all the time or from those directories all the time, I should say. And if you end up deleting your suckless stuff, you're going to break your suckless stuff. So the best place for this to be downloaded is in your .config files. So what I recommend you do, even if you're not going to be using all the programs, let's just say you're wanting to use ST, but you're not you're going to be using DWM, it doesn't matter. No matter what combination of suckless programs you do, download them in your .config slash suckless folder. So what, what I'm going to do is cd into .config, and I'm going to make directory suckless. Okay, and then I'm going to cd into suckless, and we'll clear the screen there, and then um, we'll do an ls. You can just see there's nothing in here. So the next thing you have to do is make sure you have git installed. So do a sudo, in this case, pacman-s git, and you also need a text editor, vim, or any other text editor will work. Vim is just the best one. Fight me. Uh, these are already actually already installed, so we can cancel that. But just make sure that those two things are installed. And those things are pretty much universal no matter what distribution you're doing this on because you'll need Git in order to download these things. You'll need Vim in order to edit the configuration files. So let's go ahead and download them now. So the first thing you'll want to do is figure out what software you want. And in this case, I want DWM, ST, and DMenu. So I'm going to do D DWM first, and I'm going to scroll down here to the where they have a, the command you need. Now, you could, you could probably, if you've done this often enough, you'll have this memorized. It's just git.suckless.org slash dwm. That's all it is. And we'll just paste that and wait for that to clone. And actually, while we're waiting for that, we'll go ahead and go grab uh, st as well. There's a, there's a um, command down here for you to copy and paste. Again, it's just git.suckless.org slash st. But copy and pasting is easier, and as we all know, Easier is better. So we'll go ahead and get clone that as well. Now, somebody asked me in a comment the other day whether or not you have to use ST, and the answer to that is no. If you're going to use DWM, you don't have to use ST. But what you do have to do is go into your config.def.h file and make sure you've put in there the terminal that you want to use. I'll show you that in a minute, but I just was thinking about that and I thought I'd answer that question. So I'm also going to do D menu here. And D menu is under tools, D menu, and then we can just copy and paste this here. Okay. 
And now, if we do on LS, we'll see we have D menu, DWM, and ST. So now all we have to really do is make these things. So you'll want to make sure, no matter what distribution you're on, that you have make installed. Now in on Arch Linux, you'll want to have a park package called base devel. Now on Arco here, I already have that installed. But if you've installed vanilla Arch, you'll want to make sure you have base devel installed. Uh, that's pretty much universal. It's pretty. I, even if you're not doing a suckless build, you'll want to have base devel installed because it has make in it and you need make for any number of things. It also has several other things in it, obviously, as well. So what we're going to do first is we're going to CD into DWM and we'll do an LS here. Now, before I make this, I'm going to actually show you how to not to use ST. So if I vim into config.def.h and it, let's say you didn't want to use ST. Um, what we do is we just scroll down here to the point where it defines the variable for the terminal, which is right here. This line right here. And what you could do is just change this here from ST to Alacrity. If you have Alacrity installed or Kitty or GNOME Terminal or whatever you want. And then you just write and quit this. And then what we can do is do make and then sudo make install. Okay? And that did just fine. As long as it looks like this, you're successful. Uh, if you, it comes across as an error, chances are the reason why you got an error is because you have missing uh, dependencies. Because there are several distributions that don't come with the dependencies you need to actually get this installed and most usually DWM will actually go through in the second command here the sudo make install will, will it will actually tell you what dependencies you need to install so in this case it works just fine so I'm gonna actually CD back up a level into ST I'm gonna go ahead and build ST but uh, we'll use alacrity so what we'll do here is do uh, make or excuse me yeah, we'll do make and then sudo make install. Now, I know there are going to be other people out there that would do this a little bit differently. You could do sudo make clean install. There are several ways to do this. This is just the way that I've always done it. And I'm going to do D menu as well. So we do dot dot slash. So the, actually, the first thing what I'm going to do is do sudo pacman dash rns D menu. I'm pretty sure that. Arco comes with dmenu pre-installed, so I'm going to actually go through and delete this because I want to make it myself. And the reason why I want to have it as my own package that I've made myself is because then I can go through and patch it if I choose to do so. If you have the one that's installed from the AUR, you can't easily patch it because every time uh, it gets updated or whatever, it's going to overwrite your configuration files, and that's not a great thing. So what I'm going to do here is do make. Actually, what we need to do is cd dot dot slash dmenu. And then we can do make, and then we'll do sudo make stall. Now you'll notice up here that there are a couple uh, errors in the first version. Is usually you can just go ahead and ignore those as long as it makes the second time fine. Usually that just means that there are things that are unused in the code. But you could, if you know enough C++, you could actually go through and fix those if you wanted to. So what I'm going to do now is cd up to the home directory and we'll clear the, the screen. Now the next thing you'll want to do is ensure that DWM is part of your login manager. So if you're using a login manager like SDDM or LightDM or LXDM or whatever it is, you'll need to go through and do this next step. If you're not using it, if you're using an XNRC RC file, what you'll want to do is go through and put DWM, exec DWM in your XNRC RC file. Or you could just do uh, start x slash bin slash dwm. I believe that would work. I'm using a display manager, so I need to make, make do this next step. So what I need to do is do cd slash user share x sessions. Okay, and if we do an ls here, we'll see the only thing that's in here right now is the xfc desktop. So what I need to do is do sudo touch dwm dot desktop, and then I'm going to do sudo sudo if it will actually take my keyboard again, sudo vim dwm.desktop, and then we need to do, go into insert mode and type the following. You need to do desktop entry, and then close the brackets, and then encoding equals utf 
dash eight and then name equals DWM and then comment. I don't think you actually need to put the comment in there, but uh, I've never actually tried it without, so don't quote me on that. Okay, and then exec. This for sure you do need, and you're going to be telling it what to exec when you select a choice. And then the icon equals DWM, and then the type equals X session. It was like that. Okay, and you got to make sure you do that the capitalizing there right. And then I always leave a couple extra spaces at the end. I don't know whether or not that's that's actually something that you need or not, but I found sometimes in these types of entries, if you don't leave that extra space at the end, things just won't work. So get out of exit out of insert mode, right quick, right quit this, and we're good. Now, hopefully, we're at a position where we can log out and log into DWM. So what, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And we can actually close Firefox there, close this, and then log out. Now, this is awesome. I don't know why it's not showing up in the full screen, but it doesn't really matter. We need to go down here. Now, depending on what display manager you use, this will be in a different place. If you use GDM, it'll be down here in the corner, like underneath where my video is. If you use LightDM, or I, I think I said that wrong. If you use GDM, it'll be down here in the corner. If you do use LightDM, it'll be up at the top, probably, somewhere in the bar. And this is SDDM, so it's right here. And because I'm in a virtual machine, SDDM does not always like it, So especially when you're in full screen. So I need to get out of full screen... Go back into full screen, see if it will work now. There we go. Now see how this has an option for DWM? Just select that and do TLC, which is my password. You know, because everyone wanted to know my, my password. It's okay. It's strong and complicated, but you're not supposed to tell everybody your password. It's okay. Uh, that's not the password I use every. <laughs> that's, that's horrible. All right, anyways. So this is DWM, and it worked just fine. So what we need to do is do Alt-Enter. Alt Shift Enter, I think, is the right uh, one here, and Alt is going to be your super key, and Alt Shift Enter is to get to your terminal. Now, I want want to do is go through and get the right display resolution here. So I'm going to do X Render Dash S 1920 by 1080, and that will get us full screen. So we can clear that out. Now, you have a full DWM suckless setup here. If you want to use D menu, it's Alt P. That gives us D menu up here at the top. If you wanted to use ST, you'd have to find this because remember we changed that, but ST is here as well. If you want to close something, Alt Shift C closes the th the window. Alt Shift C again. Alt Shift X would take you out of DWM completely, and that's your suckless setup. That's how you do it. Now. Another thing I get asked a lot is how to patch DWM and ST. So the process for patching any suckless software is exactly the same. So I'm just going to focus on DWM. But just know that if you're going to add a patch to D to ST or DMenu or Surf or something like that, the process is exactly the same. So the first thing you want to do is actually go find yourself the patches that you want to do. So I've already done this, but I'll just show you where to find these. So if you open up Firefox... And you actually have to know how to spell Firefox in order to, you know, open it. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you know this or not, but <laughs> you actually have to spell things right in order to launch them. It's dumb. So you'll what you want to do is go to cyclist.org and then go to DWM and then patches and then just find the patches you want to do. Now, basically what patches do is they add functionality, right? So what they're doing is adding code. When you So let's just say you wanted to do this bar height one. Let's just say you wanted to. You click on that and then you right click and then you click save link as and you'll want to make sure this is in your DWM folder within the suckless folder in your .config folder, the directory, folder directory. I'm always going to make that mistake. So you save this into that directory and then you would go through and go to your terminal and you cd into .config suckless DWM. And if you do an ls here, you'll see that file that you just downloaded. And then you can go through and 
patch that. Now I'm not going to patch that one in. I have some other ones that I'm going to patch in. So what I'm going to do is go into my downloads folder and do an ls here. I want to move everything that starts with dot diff or ends with dot diff into tilde slash dot config suckless dwm. Okay, and then we do an ls that should be empty. Okay, good. Now close that. And now if we do an ls here, I'll have the ones that I want to do added. So what I'm going to do is show you how to patch. It's very easy. So we'll just do cd. We'll do patch dash p1 and then that symbol, what that symbol is, I don't know. Uh, I missed that day in school. It's either the greater than or less than symbol. I don't know. Uh, you could tell me a hundred different times in the comments below. I'm never going to remember. So I'm just going to call it that symbol. Uh, and then what you want to do is the path to the tag. But because we're in the directory where the patch resides, we just can type in the name of the patch. So in this case, we're going to do dwm dash per tag and then hit enter. This is going to be a little bit different than all the other ones because per tag doesn't actually look normal. If it comes out like this, it, it succeeded. So let's do another one. Do patch dash p1 and then we'll do dwm dash attach below. Basically what this will do is we'll make it so that this, the window spawns on the right hand side of the, the screen instead of the left hand side of the screen. We'll hit that and hit enter. Oops. You know notice what I did there on I forgot that symbol. So uh that or that sign. You gotta do that. Okay. That succeeded and, and you can see how this looks different. Now this is what most patches will look like. Uh, it will the hunk basically just means a block of code and you wanna see, see that all the blocks of code succeeded and in this case it did. So I'm gonna go ahead and do warp next. So I'm gonna do patch dash p1. I'm not going to forget the symbol this time and do dwm dash warp. That worked just fine. And then I want to show you what happens when something fails. So the reason why I pre-downloaded these tags or these this particular selection of patches is because I know if I do it in this order, this last one should fail. And that way I can actually show you what to do when something fails. So if I do patch dash p1 watch it succeed this time because it definitely failed last time and then the one we want to do is dwm dash vanity gaps it's always a pain in the butt so we hit this and look at that we have some failures so and we actually i do have fewer fewer failures this time than i did last time but that's okay it, it's all going to be the same so in this position what you want to do is take note of the file that it saved in this case, it saved us a file called dwm.c.reject. This tells us two things. First, it tells us what file we need to check and see what changes we need to make. And it also tells us what file it failed for. In this case, it failed for dwm.c. So whatever changes it tells us to make in the .reject file, we need to make those changes in dwm.c. So I'm going to go ahead and vim into dwm.c.reject. Okay? And in this case, we have to delete some code and we know we need to delete it because here along the side you can see all these minus signs that means you need to delete if you added a, if you had to add something it would be a plus so sometimes you'll see in a reject file you'll see pluses and minuses that means there are code blocks that you have to add and you have to subtract and you'd have to go through and do each and every one of those it will only create one dwm.c dash that reject file so sometimes there's going to be multiple changes you have to make in this file. In this case, we just have to go through and delete some stuff in dwm.c. So I'm going to open up another terminal and I'm going to zoom in so you can see. And I'm actually going to move this over. I actually don't have that patch installed. In, in dwm by default, you can't move something you know to the top of the stack. It's the dumbest thing. I mean, <laughs> seriously, it's like that, that that's functionality that should be by default, but it's okay. I should be able to at least make this bigger, which I can. Okay, so we're going to cd into dot config. If I can spell suckless, if I can spell dwm, if I can spell, and we'll do an ls here. Now, remember earlier I told you to delete config.h, right? So remove config.h. That way, any of these patches that I've made 
will make it a brand new config.h with the new patches. So what we're going to do is vim into dwm.c. And what we want to do is find the particular lines it's telling us to delete. In this case, Vim has done us a favor because I've actually gone through and done this once and OBS stopped recording and I hate OBS and OBS needs to die. Not right now. It can die after I'm done recording. Um, <laughs> anyways, Vim has remembered where I was before and basically what I wanted, what I need to do is delete these lines here all the way to where it says. So in this case, we need to delete from void and title monitor asterisk m all the way down to right before void toggle bar so in this case we'll just go through and do this so we'll just keep going down using in visual mode until we get to void toggle bar and then we'll hit delete and then we'll hit dd to get rid of a couple of these extra spaces we'll right quit on that and we'll do make okay and we'll do sudo make install and then enter password Hi there, Matt from the future here. Uh, a couple things that I didn't cover in what I was just talking about. Uh, two things. First of all, when a patch fails, just know that it's not always dwm.c. I didn't really mention that. I kind of implied that it was always dwm.c that fails. But every once in a while when you install a patch, you'll have failures in other files as well. That file that gets popped up when you it mentions it fails, so in this case it was dwm.c.reject or .raj. If you have other files that also have failures, you can see those in that output as well. So you might see config.def.h.reject, you might see one of the other ones. Just know that if you have rejects or you have failures in multiple files or in different files, you'll have to correct each and every one of those failures in order for your patch to work. So, for example, the time before when I did that patch, before OBS crashed and everything made me sad, I had two different failures. I had one in config.def.h, and I had the one that I corrected on camera that you just saw. So I had to go through and actually correct both of those. Now, the reason why I didn't have that second one the second time was because I hadn't made any changes to config.def.h in this version of DWM because I'd had to delete DWM in order to re-record stuff. So that's the reason why I only had one failure. But just know that it's possible for you to have failures in multiple files, so you want to make sure you pay attention to those reject files because it's possible that you have more than one. The second thing that I wanted to mention is that I didn't do this correctly, okay? After every single patch that you install, you'll want to make and make install or make clean install, whichever one you decide to do. Don't do as I did and go through and install a whole bunch of patches and then rebuild your DWM configuration. Because the way I did it ended up working fine, as you'll see here in a minute. But it's possible that if you go through and install a whole bunch of patches and then make something, it's possible that you'll have errors in your build in your when you go through and recompile, and you don't necessarily know which patch is the one that went through and you know caused you the problems because you've installed five or six patches. So always do not what I do. Go through and install a patch, recompile, reboot, or log out and log back in. Make sure everything's hunky-dory before you go through and do another patch. Always do that. I'm going to talk about later about making sure you back up after every single patch, so make sure you pay attention all the way to the end of the video before you start patching stuff, because a lot of this stuff is very important, and unfortunately, I didn't go through and do this in the right order, so I'm recording this much later while I'm editing, and uh, I, I was watching this like, Matt, you're going to cause a lot of people a lot of problems if you don't tell them to be very careful in terms of how they go through and build their stuff, so again, just to reiterate, make sure you build after every single patch. And also, pay attention to the end of the video because I'm going to talk about backing up your files uh, before you make patches and stuff like that. So, uh, back to past Matt as he continues on with the patching process. And that's done. So if I go through and do super shift Q now and log out and then get myself, interestingly enough, I, I made a mistake earlier. I don't know if anybody caught it, but I didn't realize it did. I made changes to config.h instead of config.def.h when I changed my 
No, I didn't. Oh, you want to? I know what I did wrong. Remember I said OBS failed? I didn't make my changes to uh, the config.def.h to change the terminal and to change the my key bindings. Uh, again, because I actually had to go through and delete DWM and, and start over again. So, uh, th never mind me. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. It's okay. So, what we're going to do is extra render to get uh, my uh, display resolution back 1920 by 10. Oops. By 1080. Okay. And then to zoom in in ST, it's super shift page up. And we'll clear this out. So... So now that we're actually back in DWM and got things up and running again, and we know that it works because we've logged out and logged back in and everything's working fine, that's how you patch, and that's how you fix a patch when it fails. You'll notice that you'll find your patches failing more as you add more and more patches. So the, well, basically what patches do is they add and subtract code, and that means that the code in DWM.C and, and config.def.h that code moves around to different lines, right? And sometimes those lines that are supposed to be there get deleted by patches. That's what those diff files are. They delete and add blocks of code. And the more patches you add, the more different your code is. So the, the, any new patches that you add are looking for code that is either in a different place than it used to be or should be by default or doesn't exist at all. And that means that your patches will continue to fail more and more as you add more patches. I've never gotten to the point where I can add more than seven or eight patches in a stock version of DWM. Now there is a, a DWM uh, fork called Flexipatch or something like that that will probably allow you to add more patches because it does some magic. But if you're just building DWM the way I did, you'll notice that once you get to seven or eight patches, you're gonna probably have reached your limit especially with patches that affect the bar because the bar has a ton of variables that set the width and the length of it and each patch kind of messes with that thing and changes the variables and the changes the variable names it's really kind of a mess so the more patches you use that affect the bar the more apt you are to find ones that fail especially ones that deal with color deal with transparency the alpha patch for example those things just fail all the time and you'll get to a point where even if you go through and manage to fix the patches manually like i just showed you how to do you'll get to a point where DWM just will stop working because the patch or you'll get to a point where at least your patches won't work and that's because you'll have patches that are just incompatible. They'll, they'll never ever work together. And there are, are many like that. So if you can, even if you've manually patched a patch in and it just won't take, that means that you have some other patch there that's just they're just conflicting. So the biggest tip I can give you is make sure you back up your files your DWM and your suckless files every time you make a change. So a lot of people do this through Git. So you can go through and create a Git repository for your suckless files. And then every before you make a change, push those files up to your GitLab or your GitHub. That way, if you've made a change to a, your DWM and you've made a patch and it doesn't work and it breaks things, you can just pull that back down and go back to your old working configuration. Do this every time before you've made a patch change. Uh, that way you always have one version of DWM or Suckless or ST or DWM or DMenu, I can't talk, that works, that you know works. If you don't want to use Git, just do a cp-r on your Suckless folder that I showed you how to make and save that somewhere else so you have a backup and do that every single time you make a change, before you made the change. That way, like I said, if something goes horribly, terribly wrong, you have a backup and you don't have to worry about going through and starting completely over. Uh, I'm not very good at doing the backup thing on DWM. I get really excited about the patches and then just go through and do pile patches, or patches on patches on patches, and eventually I regret it. So don't be me. Do as I say, not as I do. I think that's what it, the way that goes. Anyways, uh, now I have to go figure out how to edit this video, which is now in two parts. So that's what I'm going to go do. If 
this video has been uploaded, you'll know I've been successful and it should be happy days. If you don't see this video, uh, you'll never know because I'm just here talking to myself. So if you want to follow me, you can do so. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast Web, Chris, Mitchell, Mr. Fox, New Patron, Merrick, and Camp. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you for your support. I'll see you next time.